Hello once again, this is your professor, Dr. Cabrera. I will discuss the organism Neisseria. It is a very important organism, especially in the field of sexually transmitted infections. Well, Neisseria are strict human pathogens and there are the most common uh, species that causes problems to us humans will be your Neisseria meningitidis and Neisseria gonorrhea. Other Neisseria species commonly present on mucosal surfaces. What are the shared uh, properties of Neisseria? The structures, they are all gram-negative, encapsulated, non-motile, Coffee bean shaped diplococci. They release lipo oligosaccharide or LOS into the host. The, the LOS contains lipid A, which is an endotoxin, and core oligosaccharide found in lipopolysaccharides. LOS is readily shed and induces to endotoxemia. For growth and biomed, uh, biomed chemical characteristics of Neisseria, they are oxidase positive and catalase positive. And with the sugar fermentation, the Neisseria meningitis uses maltose and glucose, while your Neisseria gonorrhea uses glucose only. For the inter intracellular growth, both your Neisseria meningitis and Neisseria gonorrhea can go within the cells and survive destructions by the phagocytes so they can evade one of our defense mechanisms. Let us talk about Neisseria meningitis. So for the classification, the serogroups are based on the polysaccharide capsule. The most common zero groups will be your A, B, C, Y, and W135, and there are now vaccines that are created against these zero groups. The serotypes are based on the outer membrane proteins, okay? and immunotypes are based on their lipooligosaccharides. How do Neisseria meningitis produces diseases? When Neisseria meningitis enters the respiratory tract, it invades the mucous membranes and spread via the bloodstream. When present, they are present in the posterior nasopharynx and they're antiphagocytic. Okay? Antiphagocytic capsule is important for virulence and they release endotoxin, which later on will induce. So, the, 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 this is the function of the endotoxin, it uh, induces fever and increases vascular permeability, potentially leading to shock and PTK. Meaning there will be capillary leakage in the skin. For Neisseria meningitis, meningococcal uh, diseases, uh, ER Neisseria meningitis meningitis is the most is most common in children younger than five years of age. Okay. The Meningitis caused by Neisseria meningitis is the most common cause from the first month to 18 years of age. So these are uh, meningococcal infection is most common in children younger than 5 years of age and in those with deficiency of terminal component com components or C5 to C9. Okay. In 
meningitis, though it is uh, nicer meningitis, this is most common from 1 month to 18 years of age. And it is heralded by acute onset of fever, headache, and stiff neck. And here are several pictures of those uh, with PTK and risk vascular permeability. Okay, so we can be this we can be crossed, and they happen fast. So this this one I think the the, the, the infant here died. Okay, so these are the, the severe reaction, the the severe um, necrosis that. Uh, Nicer meningitis can bring upon to a patient. So, if ever the patient survives, they may lose fingers, they may lose the limb, they may lose the leg, they may have neurologic sequelae. Okay, for the Philippines, it's uh, rarely uh, patients with nicer meningitis survive. But if ever, like in, in more advanced countries, so quite common in temperate areas, they may survive but they live uh, severe disabilities. Okay, see, the pectical rash, usually the rash will develop so fast, okay, and it can even go beyond severe necrosis to even amputation of one extremity. So, your Nicida meningitis, okay, especially your acute meningococcemia, can be rapidly fatal. The mortality rate is around 25% or higher if not treated promptly. So, your acute meningococcemia can have septicemia with or without meningitis. And it is characterized by fever, shock, general hemorrhage, Ranging from petechiae to even purpura. So, your acute meningococcemia is characterized by fever, shock, and generalized hemorrhage ranging from petechiae to purpura. So, what is water Federichsen syndrome? So, this is a complication of uh, meningococcemia, which is uh, characterized as marked by overwhelming disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC and bilateral hemorrhagic adrenal infarction. Okay. So there is bilateral hemorrhagic adrenal infarction with septic shock, acute hypotension, tachycardia, and petechiae. And the acute meningococcemia, if ever the patient survived, can develop chronic meningococcemia. Chronic meningococcemia can be milder disease characterized by persistent, even for weeks, of bacteremia with low grade fever, arthritis, and pedicular skin lesions. And it may present with mild febrile disease with pharyngitis, pneumonia, arthritis, or urethritis. So, for how do we get, or how is the, what is the mode of transmission of your Nicira meningitis? Usually, it is person to person spread from infected person. So, how? We, it's through inhalation of aerosol droplets, often from asymptomatic carriers or asymptomatic patients. It is uh, found in the posterior mesopharyngeal area of the carriers. So how do we prevent? Um, quite surprisingly, breastfeeding infants for the first six uh, months of life is protective against Neisseria meningitis. Okay? Maybe because of the uh, in, uh, antibody that are uh, transferred from the breast milk okay, to the infant and it serves as a protective covering for the, for the infant 
and of course they can do active immunization of children older than two years of age with a polyvalent conjugate anti-capsular vaccine which sometimes are not uh, effective against serotype B and you can also give post-exposure prophylaxis with the following drugs post-exposure means once you're exposed to a case then you can uh, and you cannot vaccinate and if, if it's impossible to cover you with vaccination then you can give um, prophylaxis with the following drugs your rifampin your quinolone or even your sulfonamides only you can use these ones especially the sulfonamide if there are studies that are that proves that the organism is susceptible to the drug So, what is the treatment for uh, Nysirimin EDDs? It is simple and it is cheap. Thank God, it's just penicillin. But the problem is, how fast will you recognize the infection? Or would you be uh, keen enough <clears throat> to observe and diagnose that what is in your in front of you, a case in front of you would be meningococcinia. If ever you can you do not have penicillin, what are your alternatives? Your alternatives would be uh, broad spectrum cephalosporin, like your ceftriaxone. You can give your chloramphenicol and your sulfonamide. If again there are studies that says that. Uh, the organism in the community will be susceptible to the uh, sulfonamides. So, in these cases, antibiotics must be released from the mucosa to the sec into secretions to eliminate the carrier state. So, oh, what is this? Looks like a potato. Is it really a potato? So, is it a chocolate? A weird looking chocolate? It is a diplococci. Okay, it's a diplococci with pili and this organism. Neisseria gonorrhea. Uh, Neisseria gonorrhea can be grown in a selective chocolate agar called your tire martin medium okay, of which it is used for isolation of your nice gonorrhea in specimens from non sterile areas like your cervix and urethra and contains several antibiotics that will kill the contaminants like the vancomycin it will kill gram negative positive bacteria the cholestine will kill them negative bacteria except for your Neisseria species and Nisatin which uh, takes care of the fungal contamination. Okay. So what is the pathogenesis for your Neisseria gonorrhea? The pili or your fimbri if you can remember the, the picture earlier then it has a lot of pili and outer membrane proteins. It contains IgA protease which cleaves your secretory IgA. So your pili and pili and your outer membrane protein 2 or your OMP2 will promote okay, adherence to, to an invasion of mucosal cells. The IgA proteases will cleave secretory IgA, reducing host defense to gonococcal infection. So they stick and they uh, decrease the host defense. And, and the Ornicera gonorrhea can release endotoxins, which might, will cause fever, 
vascular permeability, inflammation, and tissue destruction. There's now a concern of the antibiotic resistance, especially to the beta-lactamase, which is quite common nowadays and even long before. Okay. And also, there is a, uh, an issue on antigenic variation of the surface protein. And this, this characteristic can, it can permit escape of your Neisseria gonorrhea to the antibody response. Okay. So what are your gonococcal diseases? Sexually active individuals with multiple partners are at greatest risk. Okay. Sexually active individual with multiple partners are at greatest risk for your Neisseria gonorrhea infection, which is spread primarily by sexual contact. Uh, it produces acute gonococcal infection or gonorrhea or GC in male. It produces urethritis with purulent urethral discharge and dysuria, which is really a painful type of urination. And for female, it causes cervicitis with vaginal discharge, dysuria, dysuria and abdominal pain and fever. Okay, oh, this might be a very good representation of dysuria in males. Okay, I got this burning sensation when I peed. Doc, do you think this is serious? For pelvic inflammatory diseases or PID, it is the infection of the uterus, fallopian tube, or otherwise called your salpingitis, and ovaries. And there's an ascending infection that may result in infertility and predispose to ectopic pregnancy. And there will be pus collection under the right diaphragm which causes scarring, scar tissue formation between the diaphragm and the liver surface causing pain with movement. You call that your Fitz huge Curtis syndrome. So your Fitz huge Curtis syndrome is the is the collection of pus under the right diaphragm which later on cause scarring and between the diaphragm and the liver surface causing pain with movement so yes that's your fits huge curtis syndrome how about unital conjunctivitis so these are the infection that they are are, are sequelae of your Neisseria gonorrhea, so your neonatal conjunctivitis results from infection during delivery by the infected mother. And uh, we can decrease okay, the, the risk or the incidence of the neonatal conjunctivitis through the use of erythromycin eye drops at birth. Okay, so these are uh, uh, pictures of the urethritis of a male. So there is now the, the milk the substance uh, discharge and the milk discharge in the uh, introitus of the female. And this is a picture of a baby suffering from uh, neonatal gonococcal conjunctivitis and this is not a baby this is a, a um, maybe an adult that has gonococcal conjunctivitis imagine how that adult got it Okay, so the disseminated diseases caused by your Neisseria gonorrhea, usually it is a female dominant disease characterized by septic arthritis, dermatitis arthritis syndrome, bacteremia, and endocarditis. 
So your bacteremia, okay, can uh, it can manifest. So so your dermatitis syndrome and bacteremia can manifest uh, like uh, skin lesions, fever, and joint pain, and also. Uh, Deficiency of terminal complement component a C6 to C9 predisposes to the to disseminated disease. The anorectal gonorrheal uh, infection are common in among homosexual men, and so as with your gonococcal pharyngitis. So, what are the most common causes of your pelvic inflammatory disease? We have two. Your gonorrhea and your chlamydia pachomatis. How do we differentiate the two? For nasal gonorrhea, the condition is acute, and the patient will usually have high-grade fever. While with your chlamydia pachomatis, it is subacute, so the patient cannot sometimes cannot recognize it, and often it goes undiagnosed. So how do we treat the uh, infection due to nasal gonorrhea? So when, whenever you're treating gonococcal urethritis and cervicitis, the treatment should be uh, directed against two organisms, your chlamydia pachomatis and your nasal gonorrhea, because the other infection is quite common. So we can give you anti-gonococcal drugs like oxyfixin, ceftriaxone, and azithromycin in, in your anti chlamydial uh, drugs that includes your tetracycline, doxycycline, ofloxacin, and azithromycin. In in cases where there is disseminated or and, and there is a uh, bacteremic illness, it usually it will pro, it will have a prolonged therapy with penicillin or ceftriaxone may later on be required for your neonatal uh, gonococcal and chlamydial conjunctivitis it can be prevented by using or application of erythromycin or silver nitrate ointment to the eyes of the newborn okay and that's it finally we've done so now i taught you the basics of your Neisseria Okay, we have your Neisseria meningitis and your Neisseria gonorrhea. And the illnesses that these uh, organisms bring, so hopefully uh, you will remember the basic and will be based on later on study more on the clinical aspect of it. So again, this is Dr. Cabrera, your professor, saying marami salamat po. See you next session. Study very well. Have a great day. Please click the thumbs up button and subscribe and click also your notifications so that you'll be notified whenever I'll be posting a new uh, educational video. Thank you very much.